Yes, and here in Canada, it's Mental Health Week, and this year's theme is all about showcasing compassion to those who are suffering from stressors like political, workplace, or interpersonal relationships. Jason Guidola joins us live tonight with more on this. Hey, Jason. Uh, hey, Nicole, and I did speak with a few experts today about the issues and they, that they believe are very much layered, but as we continue navigating a post-pandemic world, it's the inability to afford the costs of everyday life that is causing much of the increase of the mental plight in our society. Cost of your weekly grocery bill or a stagnant wage at your job is enough to increase mental health concerns amongst Canadians. Unfortunately, if you go into 2024, the economy and the downturn in the economy is causing tremendous um, threat and challenge to people in general. So people are facing threats due to the payment of their mortgages, the payment of their rent, they're challenged by um, trying to find a job. Today marks the first day of Mental Health Week in Canada and government officials are recognizing modern issues. And this year we're focused on healing through compassion. Times are tough for a lot of us right now. From affordability to geopolitics to climate change, it all takes a toll on our mental health. According to some mental health experts, it's going to take interpersonal will and know-how to address the everyday struggles some may experience. The Canadian Mental Health Association says much is at stake as more people are experiencing mental illness or mental health concerns. They say in any given year, one in five Canadians will experience one or the other. By the age of 40 or older, roughly 50% of the population will begin to experience mental angst. And statistics on Canadian youth are also concerning. Certainly it's, you know, suicidality is increasing in youth as well. And so we're seeing more and more youth, um, you know, contemplating suicide, having thoughts of suicide and attempting suicide. So that's, you know, incredibly concerning. Eating disorders, we're also seeing an increase with younger people. While psychiatric help and pharmacology are used for severe cases, experts say much of the everyday plight and pressures are tied to environmental factors, whether be it education, affordable living, or your everyday job. Specifically, when you're looking for statistically, we, we have a large percentage, probably around 60 to 70% of the population any given day is languishing. Okay, languishing is not mental illness. Take your general population and start to realize that lots of folks, their batteries aren't really as charged as they would like them to be. Workplace mental health expert Bill Howitt says the workforce may have access to resources and information, but lack the ability to check if certain mental health supports are working. But the real challenge is we're not spending enough time slowing down to check if what we're supposed to be doing is actually working. So we have a lot of activity based, a lot of random back to wellness, a lot of good intentions, but we're not still getting the point of, there's not real clear evidence of what actually is specifically working with, with who and what populations to get the outcomes we want. The Canadian federal government responded today, reiterating some of their budgeted investments for 2024, highlighting their mental health youth fund as part of their $200 billion commitment towards mental health over the next decade.